Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay. I've got a little confession to make. Over the last week, we've been in Spain, and we've been having a lovely time in sunny Spain, and I've been recording the episodes each day in our little studio that we've got in our little pad in Spain. So while in the UK, the weather's not been maybe 100%, And now that we're back in the UK, I'm looking out the window and it's been a bit stormy, I have to say, down on the south coast. But we arrived in to Bristol Airport yesterday. The plane was a bit delayed, but we arrived in and we went from our 30 degree beautiful blue sky and sunshine to the very cold UK. Six degrees when we arrived. Really chilly. Anyway, look. Let's crack on. Huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our nighttime podcast and welcome to another episode. Got a Facebook page, an Instagram page and a YouTube channel. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And if you could follow me, I would really, really appreciate it. Feel free to send any feedback on our shows to brett at toradate.co.uk. Also, we've got our supportive page at patreon.com forward slash Brett's All Time Radio Show. However, right now, it's time for our Thursday night episode of Tales of the Texas Ranger. This was first broadcast on the 8th of October 1950, and it's called Living Death. Presenting Joel McRae as Jace Pearson in Tales of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> of the Texas Rangers, authentic stories from their official files. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, Living Death. It is 2 a.m. on the morning of October 3rd, 1948. A man stands in the brush on the American side of the Rio Grande, watching another man wading rapidly across the river from the Mexican side. Come on, come on, hurry up. Senor Green! Senor Green, where are you? Over here. Shut up. Oh. I almost fallen. Never him. mind. You crazy wearing a white sombrero with that moon? What is the harm, Senor Green? Nobody see the ego but you. Don't be too sure of that. Somebody followed me down here. I don't know whether I shook him or not. The border patrol? No. Hijacker, maybe. You got the package? Oh, see. Right here. 20 ounces. Okay, here's your money. 200 an ounce. $4,000. Oh, gracias. Will be another shipment next week. Yeah, I know. I'll meet you here again on the 12th. Same time. And be a little more... You all right, amigo? Someone does follow you? Quiet. Son came from over there. He's moving this way. You'll have to crawl through that clearing first, and the moon's right on it. You going to use a gun? What do you think I got it for? Keep quiet. There he is, coming into the moonlight. Yeah, and he doesn't see us. Just like a sitting duck. You hit him, senor? Yeah. It looks like I didn't hit him good enough. Yeah, that's better. Grab his leg. Senor, Grab I his don't... leg and get him out of this clear and into the brush. The longer it takes to find him, the better. Uh, see. Uh, senor Green, uh, we shouldn't have met this place again. It will not be safe. All right, drop him here. No, we can't use this place again. It'll be too high. I must get back across the river. Where do we meet next time? Next time, use our old crossing. Near the us. I'll get lost. Fast! The body of the slain man was discovered, but for two months there was no clue to point to his killer. 
And then suddenly another man was shot to death on the streets of a small town in West Texas. And Captain Stinson of the Texas Rangers radioed Ranger Jace Pearson to meet him at the county morgue. Bodies on this slab, Jace. Shot right through the heart, eh, Captain? Yeah. And here's our ballistics report. Forty-five caliber slug. Look at the markings on this photo of it. Uh-huh. All right. Now, look at this ballistics photo. This is a report on the slug they took out of the man who was killed near the border two months ago. Yeah, I see what you mean. Both slugs came from the same gun. Mm Mm-hmm. Autopsy report on this man completed yet? Being typed up. We'll have it in a minute. Clyde Mooney's waiting for it. Mooney? Oh, is he here? Yeah, I sent for both of you. Mooney worked on the border killing. Since it's tied up with his second killing, I thought you'd better tackle it together. Suits me fine. You got some special reason for wanting to see the autopsy report, Jace? Yeah. Look at the body. Marks on the left forearm. Look like the kind we usually find on drug addicts. Well, we'll know in a second. Here's Clyde now. Howdy, Captain. Hi, Jace. Howdy, Clyde. Good to see you, boy. Heard you talking as I come in, Jace. You hit it, all right. Here's the autopsy report. Man was a drug addict. He's probably just as well off dead, then. Bullet ties this one right up with your border case, Clyde. Guess we're both after the same killer. Yeah, I've been hunting wetbacks for two months trying to find the man who was toting the gun no slugs came from. Anything else you boys want to see here? No, Cap. No, Cap. Well, let's get out of here, then. Any identification on this man we just saw, Cap? Not a thing. He was dressed like a hobo. Doesn't fit any of the descriptions on missing persons reports, either. Might help a lot if we knew who he was. I can't see this killing as a job done by a wetback. Why not, Jace? It was somebody sneaking across the border. Tracks weren't clear by the time the body was found down there, but there were tracks. Both your cars in back near mine? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jace, go ahead with your theory. Well, a wetback sneaking into the country to earn a few dollars working is usually too poor to own a gun, unless he's carrying something across with him. You thinking of those hypo marks, Jace? It adds up to me. Narcotic smuggling. Might be. Man who was killed in my territory could have been shot because he spotted somebody crossing with the stuff. Well, that's possible. But how about the dead man we just left? He wasn't shot near the border. It looked like he was down and out. Had the habit, but not the price. Might have tried to get some narcotics by threatening to expose the peddler. I'll buy that, Jace. How about you, Clyde? Best bet I've had so far. All right, Jace. Where are you planning on starting? Back along the border. What, my area? No. Killing was made that spot too hot for them. They'll go back to some old crossing that's cooled off. I know a few, and you probably know a few. Well, yeah. Place west of Laredo. Then there's uh, Devil's River. That's been quiet lately. Yeah. Now. And the Castellon area in the Big Bend, up through Lajitas and Redford. It's a big border. Yeah, so the sooner we get started, the more of it we can cover. You're dragging a double trailer, Jay. Suppose I load my horse in with charcoal. We'll use one car. Good. Let's go. Mooney and I covered the old smuggler crossings one by one But weeks passed and we hadn't found anything by the time we reached the big bend We were riding the river near Lajitas Getting kind of late, Jace We ought to make camp turn in Yeah, might as well quit this spot tomorrow Move on toward Redford there's a good campsite ahead, clearing near that clump of honey mesquite. <laughs> You've got eyes like a cat. We can make radio contact when we get back to the car tomorrow. Cap may have something for us. Yeah. What was it he said he'd check on? Narcotic possession cases. Trying to pin down areas where the drug traffic seems to be the heaviest. Man who's smuggling narcotics must be picking up for a central distributor. Well, it could be just a small operator. Well, small operators. Business wouldn't warrant the risk of crossing the border. Whoever makes the pickup is working for a boss. Well, why couldn't he be the distributor making his own pickup? Ah, big boy would play it safe. Stick somebody else's neck out, not his own. Ah, Here we are. Ooh, ooh, Charlie. Ooh, boy. Ah. You want to get the bedrolls off, Jace? I'll strike a fire, get some chuck cooking. No. No, let's skip the fire and eat cold. Why? We're moving out of here tomorrow. I'd like to watch one more night. It's too quiet here. There haven't been reports of any trouble in this section in almost three years. We haven't even spotted a wetback trail. Okay, no fire. Might as well let the horses drink before we hobble them. Come on, Charcoal. Come on, boy. 
I want to rub Charco's legs down tonight. Leche Gia's been cutting him up. Yeah, I got a few nasty scratches myself. Atta boy. Drink up. You looking for something over there, Jace? Yeah. Let the horses go for a second. Come here. Bring a flashlight. What is it? Slight depressions in this mud bank. Just barely saw them. Flash the light. Yeah. They were tracks, all right. Not much left, though. Something else here. A piece of paper half buried. Must have been stepped on. Hmm, brown. Looks like that brown stickum paper they use to seal packages. No. This is the kind of paper a bank uses to wrap money. Look. There traces of blue on here from an ink stamp. Yeah, can you read it? No. Maybe the lab at Austin can. Anybody who tore a band from a packet of money in this spot must have been counting it. Yeah, this isn't exactly a business neighborhood. Let's stake out, boy. We found some kind of a crossing, and it may be the one we're looking for. We didn't dare move out of the area. We took turns sleeping and keeping the horses out of sight as much as possible. At night, we crept out along the river, moving slowly under cover. Five nights now, Jace. Maybe they won't cross again in the same spots. I know. A mile above or below us, and we'd never even see them. We found tracks in a couple of places along here. They might... What? Oh. <laughs> One of our horses. Thought we had something for a minute. Clyde, that isn't one of ours. It's coming from the wrong direction. Put your ear to the ground. I don't have to. I can hear him coming now. Can't be our horses. They're hobbled, and the one we hear is moving free. Come on. Don't show yourself on the riverside. That's where his contact will come from. Coming now. There's something moving in the water out there. A few hundred yards down. Our horses would have to be up the other way. We'll have to try it on foot. We haven't time to go back and get mounted. They make a fast pass. We'll never get there in time anyhow. We'll have to risk a little noise. That moving horse will cover our approach until he stops. Step it up. Uh, the contact is across to this side by now. I can't see him out there anymore. Wait. Wait. The horse is stopping, too. Diego? Oh, here, senor. Come on, give me the stuff. Here's the money. Well, they're not wasting any time, Jace. No. Let's go. Stay where you are! Hold the Get going, Diego. Run. Get him, boy. I'll get the one in the river, Jace. Stop that horse! Get him, Clyde? Yeah. He shot at close range, Jason. I had to kill him. We've got to leave him and get after that rider. Let's get to the horses. Right. Only we've been 50 yards closer to him back there, Jace. He went over the ridge up ahead. We can pick up his trail up there. I could swear I hit him when I fired. I hope you did. Narcotic traffic's the filthiest thing on earth. Oh, here's the ridge, Chase. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, Charco. Oh, boy. Yeah. Look where we have to track. Uh, Mesquite and greasewood. Ground as hard as rock. Won't be much of a trail here, Jace. It'll take us hours to cut back and forth looking for soft spots. Yeah, no time for that. Get off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to be too bad if I didn't hit him. A blood trail's our only chance. Yeah. They'll find another contact for narcotics across the border. Sure they will. Unless we get to the man we're after. He's the only one who can lead us to the ring on this side of the border. And we've got to get to him before he gets rid of that package. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Today marks our first Sunday broadcast, and we sincerely hope that all our old friends who listen to us on Saturday night will be with us at this new Sunday time. Also, we extend a cordial welcome to our new listeners and hope that you'll be with us every Sunday at this time. Now we continue with tonight's case, Living Death. An authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. We 
combed the ground for a blood trail, and we found it. Not much, but enough to follow. It led through the mesquite and greasewood, but the rider knew the country. He'd been weaving through the roughest spots. He's a smart one, Jace. Yeah, slowing us down all the way. Got a good hour on us by now. And an hour is too long. He's probably just using that horse to get to a car someplace. We can't waste any more time trail cutting them. No. He must have headed for cover someplace to take care of that wound. General direction seems to be northeast. We'll have to gamble on it. Okay. Let's ride. Get up, Charlie. After two miles, we reached a road and picked up the trail again. We had horse tracks to follow now, and they led to a dilapidated barn near a rundown ranch house. He was here, all right, Clyde. Blood in the hay and his torn cloth ripped a piece off his shirt to make a bandage. He knew this spot and headed right for it. He must have been here before. Yeah. But we're still way behind him. Mm. Main road's only a mile or so from here. He's gotten to his car by now. The ranch house is dark. Well, let's wake him up. He might have seen something or heard something. We'll leave the horses here. Okay. This place sure has gone to seed, Jason. Yeah, it's a big house, but it's falling apart. Fences sagging, no stock. Must have been a nice ranch once, though. Uh, it isn't anymore. Man gets his living from the earth, you'd think he'd take better care of it. Here's the house. Open up. Hey, wake up in there. Who is it? Texas Rangers, ma'am. We'd like to talk to you. Just a minute. There was an electric power line to the house, but when she opened the door, she was carrying a candle. The inside of the house was almost barren. What do you want? We're looking for a rider who came through here tonight. He stopped in your barn. You see or hear anything? No, I didn't. You rent out a horse to anybody? <laughs> a horse? Range, if I had a horse, I'd have sold him for food for my kids. Mm, sorry we have to bother you, ma'am. It's all right. What difference does it make? You know anybody around who... Would you mind holding your candle over the mantle of this fireplace? Why? Jace. That picture. The picture was a photograph of a man. The face was younger, full and healthier than when we'd seen it last. But there was no doubt about who it had been. Jace, that's a picture of the man we saw with the cap, the body, and the morgue. The Mo- <gasps> Take it easy, ma'am. Take it easy. Mama, I'm sorry. When? When did you see him? Oh, he can't be dead. He can't be. I'm afraid he is, ma'am. And you'll help us a lot if you'll tell us who he was. Jack Prentice. My husband. Oh, my poor kid. Oh, why didn't you report him missing? Because he left me two years ago. He'd sold and lost everything we owned. He was sick, half crazy, acting like a madman. I don't know why I didn't do anything. He'd never been like that before. You got any idea at all what started it? A friend of his. Jack was all right. He was a good husband and father till he took up with Virgil Green. Then he spent more time with him than he did with us. He must have been gambling or something. We had a good place here. Then it was all gone. This isn't going to be easy to take, ma'am. Your husband wasn't a gambler. He was a drug addict. Oh, oh, why didn't he tell me? I begged him to go to a doctor, but he wouldn't. When did you see him last? I told you, two years ago. When Virgil Green left him, Jack left right after him. You seen this Virgil Green since then? No. You know where Green went after he left here? No, but it must have been Chino. I got a couple of letters from Jack came from there. And then he stopped writing. Not even a word to his kid. Ma'am, I hate to leave you like this, but we'll see if we can get you some help later on. Nothing can help anymore. Not for me. But I'd beg for my kid. You won't have to. You'll hear from us. Come on, Clyde. We gotta get the boy who gunned her husband, Jace. 
We've got to get more than one. We've got to get them all. The whole ring. There'll be a hundred more like her husband, dying slower and worse than he did. You think this Virgil Green is a link? It must be. Fits the cards we've been playing. Jack Prentice couldn't raise money to buy from Green. Threatened to expose him, and Green killed him. Then he killed a man near the border, too. Got to try to pick up Green at Chino. He knew this place. It's a fair bet he's the man we've been chasing. Get up, Charcoal. Oh, boy. Taking him is going to be a pleasure. We can't take him. Not until we find out if he still has that package. We better knock on these ponies until we get to our car. Uh, get up, Charcoal. Oh, yeah. Oh, got to the car, but before we headed for Chino, I put in a phone call to Captain Stinson. All right, Jace. I'll have a ranger plane pick up that bank wrapper and send it to the lab. It may be a bank in Chino. Well, that fits with a few other things. My checkup shows a heavy drug traffic in and around the Chino area, and the town where Prentice was killed is only 60 miles from Chino. Good. That narrows it down. Uh, see if you can dig up a Chino address on Virgil Green while we're driving up there. He's only two hours ahead of us. If we can burn up road, we may reach there almost as soon as he does. Let you know by radio, Jace. I'll head for Chino myself. Thanks, Captain. We'll see you there. We were less than an hour out of Chino when our short wave came through with Green's address. KTXA to Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead. Address of subject Virgil Green is Greendale Ranch, State Highway 39, 14 miles west of Chino. Got it. Any report from lab on bank money wrapper? Stamp on money wrapper restored by Austin Lab. Money and packet came from Chino State Bank, Corner Main, and Crockett in Chino. 10 4, Unit 10, clear. KDXA, Austin. That's all we need, Jace. Yeah. We can get Green in sight before he unloads that package. It was dark when we reached the Greendale Ranch outside of Chino. We'd made up time on Green's head start because we saw a car and horse trailer pull into the ranch just ahead of us. A man got out of the car and limped up to the house, and he was carrying a package. Walks like a man's been shot in the leg, Jace. Yeah. Don't turn in after him. Go on past the ranch. Okay. Where do you want to stop? Uh, where we can watch the house and keep the car shielded. Well, there was some heavy brush on the other side of the road just across from Green's place. All right. Turn around and go back. We'll keep an eye on him from there. We kept a watch on Green's house all night, but nobody showed to pick up the package. The next morning, Green came out and got into his car. We followed him into Chino. He's pulling into a parking space up near the next corner, Jace. Yeah, slow down. He's getting out. He's got the package, all right, sticking out of his pocket. Park here, quick. He's going into that building on the corner. Come on, before we lose him. Hey, the street sign, Main and Crockett. And he went in there, Jace. Chino State Bank. That's where the money wrapper came from. Don't go in. Just walk around the corner. We can look through the bank windows. There he is, Jace. Last counter, the rear of the bank. Safe deposit boxes. Going through the rail into the vault. Must have a box he's going to plant the stuff in. We going to grab him? No. Wait he comes out. But he won't have it on him then. We got enough on him. We can pick him up any time. Got to stay with that package until we know who gets it next. Hey, he wasn't in there long. He's coming out. Yeah, the package isn't in his pocket now. All right, get out of sight. Yeah. Right. He was in there just long enough to open up the box and drop it. Yeah, you've seen the package now. Drift around to the front of the bank. See that nobody leaves that vault with it unless you follow him. Okay, well, where are you going? To meet the captain and get a court order to open that vault. got the order. Then we waited until the bank closed and the employees were out. We got the president of the bank at his home and took him back to open the vault. Narcotics, eh? 
most distressing, gentlemen. Oh, come in, please. All right. Which box is Green's? 421, right here. Want to open it for us? Why, of course. What? Say, it's, oh. it's empty. Now, couldn't you have made a mistake, Ranger? No. Clyde, are you sure that package wasn't taken out? Positive, Jace. I watched every single person went in or out till the bank closed. Our order covers the rest of these boxes, doesn't it, Captain? Yes. All right. Let's open them all. We found what we were after, but not the way we expected to find it. The stuff was there, all right, but it had been split up into smaller quantities. The owners of these boxes must be names you have on your list of dope peddlers then, Captain. I'll check that on the bank records. Yeah, but how'd this stuff get split up? Green wasn't in here long enough to do it. No, he couldn't have done it. Miss Key would only give him access to his own box. They have to be done by somebody with a set of duplicate keys. Somebody working here. Well, that's impossible. Only the head cashier and I have duplicate keys. Were you in the vault after the bank closed? No, sir. I haven't been in here all day. That's the truth, Jace. I could see him through the window. And then the head cashier's our boy. He's the distributor. And a pretty clever distribution scheme, too. No direct contact, and he has access to the vault after the guard has left. If he's handled those packets, there'll be fingerprints on them. What's his name and where does he live? His name is August Weber. He's got a big ranch over near Estrella on Highway 39. And I know how he got it now. He said he was making money on investments. Investments? He meant a black market in human souls. Come on, Clyde. Let's get him and Virgil Green. We found the house. An elaborate building on a fine ranch. There was another car in the driveway when we pulled up. Hey, Jace. That car in front of the place. Yeah, we're in luck. It's the car Virgil Green was driving. Light around the side of the house by that French door. Maybe they didn't hear us drive in. Good. Let's slip up on that side of the porch and find out. Might be able to take him easy. Uh, don't count on it. Cold-blooded killer like Green. He'd keep on killing as long as he has a gun. <laughs> We slipped up to the French door. It was locked and we couldn't see through it. But their voices drifted out through an open window. I'm telling you, Weber, my leg is infected. I've got to see a doctor. Have him report a bullet wound. You want me to die? I could put a bullet in you, too. Well, let me know when you want to try. I've done a little killing myself, Green. Only I've been smarter about it. Nobody's caught me yet. All right, Clyde. Let's kick a hole in this door. All right. Don't move. Ranger. Don't reach. Uh, Clyde, you hurt that? My, my side. You, you're hit too, Jace. Blood on your head. Yeah, just a neck. Come on. I'll get you to a hospital. How about... How about them? Leave them for the coroner. They're both dead. The gun found beside the body of Virgil Green proved to be the murder weapon the Rangers had been seeking. Narcotics peddlers having safe deposit boxes at the Chino State Bank were rounded up, and they admitted they had been supplied by August Weber. They were tried and sentenced. The traffic in living death was halted. And here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. A friend of mine returned recently from a visit to Texas. While he was there, he'd seen a Texas ranger, and he asked his host, a rancher, what the requirements were for a man who wanted to be a ranger. The host looked thoughtful for a moment and said, Well, I'd say if a man could ride like a Mexican, trail like an Indian, shoot like a Tennessean, and fight like the devil, he might have a chance to get in. <laughs> well, I hope you'll be with us again next week. Same time, same station. Good night.
Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the MGM production Stars in My Crown. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Barney Phillips, Larry Dobkin, Byron Kane, Ken Harvey, and Lillian Byam. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of Tales of the Texas Ranger. And we'll be back tomorrow for Steptoe and Son. That's going to be going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at tourdate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. I did have a couple of emails regarding the episode of Hancock's Half Hour that we put out on Monday. The sound quality was pretty rubbish, I'm afraid. I do apologise. However, it was a it was a decision on do we just put stuff out because it, you know it's available or do we not? So what I think we'll probably do from now onwards is rather than just put out some of these shows because, you know, because kind of they're there, I think we're going to do a little bit more of a quality control. And what I'll do is I'll put any shows that probably maybe aren't of the best quality. We'll just put those on our sort of our locked patron page. And then if you want to listen to them, they'll be there. As I mentioned earlier, we have got a supporter page. That's at patreon.com forward slash Brett's All Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. And I'll see you next time. Brett's All Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye. <laughs>